Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. And in this series of videos, we'll be talking about DNA replication process, DNA replication in bacteria. Okay. So I've been getting many requests uh, to do a video on prokaryotic DNA replication because I already made uh, the eukaryotic DNA replication series and uh, people liked it. So obviously, if you like that video, you can also watch this whole series of prokaryotic DNA replication. And in a general sense, uh, the basics idea of our DNA replication in this video series. This is going to be a three-step video series where we'll be talking about uh, the initiation of DNA replication, elongation of DNA replication, and termination of DNA replication. And for the understanding of what DNA replication really is, how DNA replication actually works, and what are the enzymes that are involved in DNA replication, uh, you must watch different video in my channel. Uh, there is a separate video on that uh, in the eukaryotic DNA replication part. Also, there are separate videos based on that. But in this video, I'm straight through talk about uh, the initiation, elongation, and termination of DNA replication in E. coli cell. Now, uh, the prokaryotic replication means uh, the examples are bacteria. And in this case, we take a simple example that is Escherichia coli bacteria or E. coli bacteria. And we'll, we'll take E. coli and we'll see how DNA replication take place inside E. coli cell. So in this first video, I'm going to talk about uh, the different stages uh, of DNA replication in E. coli. It starts with, uh, you know, uh, actually there are no such stages uh, in, in, as far the replication process goes. We name all those stages so that we understand the topic very well. So in this case, we divide this whole process uh, in three different uh, stages like initiation of replication, elongation of replication, and termination of replication. So. So we'll begin with initiation of replication, elongation then in the next video and then in the third video we'll be talking about termination of DNA replication. Okay. So initiation means the start point of DNA replication in E. coli cell and it involves, it is one of the most important stages of all these three. Okay. Because initiation, once initiation is start, initiation is done, then there is no way the cell is going to back off from the replication process, right? So initiation is one of the most important stages of DNA replication. Second is the elongation. Elongation is the stage where exactly or actually the polymerization of DNA strand take place, okay? So where the DNA is elongated. The new DNA strand is actually formed. This is in the elongation phase. While in the third termination phase, that's the end of DNA replication. When the, uh, I, that means the cell commit to a replication, this produces the new strand of the DNA and they terminate it at the end, right? That is the end of DNA replication. Now, these three things are different in case of eukaryotes and in case of prokaryotes. You know, where the difference lies, the difference lies mostly in the initiation part of DNA replication. Because in all these biological processes, uh, the molecular biological process like DNA replication, transcription, uh, protein synthesis or translation, in all these cases, initiation is very, very vital stage always because initiation is a determination phase where the cell will undergo the cell cycle or not, right? Because this process of DNA replication takes place in the cell cycle, right? During the cell wants to divide. Then only it will try to make a copy of that set of the DNA. That is that makes complete sense, right? So in the in the growth one phase, you know there are two different phases of cell cycle: interphase and mitotic phase. In the interphase, there are three different stages: G1, S, and G2. Now the whole process of DNA replication takes place in the S phase. That's known as synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Now what happens there in synthesis phase, before synthesis phase, cell checks whether everything is okay inside or not. Cell checks for whether uh, the cell cytoplasm is to nucleus ratio. In case of uh, bacteria and stuff, they will check the cytoplasm into genetic content ratio and stuff. And is all the proteins that are necessary for the replication is maintained and produced inside the cell or not. And once they find everything is okay, they will bring the cell into the S phase and they cell divide. This is in case of, uh, I mean, S phase and all these phases, you know, mitotic divisions in eukaryotic cells. But in bacteria, what we see, it's a binary fission, right? In bacteria, the cell division process occurs slightly differently. There is a binary fission. One cell is there, 
from that cell two cells are produced and the DNA is uh, duplicated and separated. So again in that case also there is a commitment issue that whenever uh, the cell thinks that the cell cytoplasm is so much elongated let's say a cell starts its journey small cell starts its journey with the nuclear content then this cell slowly start to go big and it is bigger and only one cytoplasm then the cell decides that lot of cytoplasm is there less nuclear content so it needs to separate the cytoplasmic content into two daughter cells it, at that time the cell wants to replicate its DNA content so that after that it can divide it can divide the cell into two different daughter cells now this daughter cell will undergo the same process that's how the whole thing goes on and on this is the process of bacterial cell division by binary fission though there are multiple proteins involved in in, in production of the septum between those uh, that uh, large cytosol and separating cells but this is the general view so that when they decide the cell want to go and divide that is a huge commitment because the first stage of initiation involves many different enzymes many different proteins combined with each other and they will initiate the process once you initiate the process because it requires a lot of ATP and energy source once you initiate the process you cannot go back at that time okay so that's very very important so that is the first important stage then the elongation is the polymerization termination is the end so let's let's talk about initiation in much more detail uh, in this particular video the initiation phase uh, starts with a specific sequence that is present in the bacterial genome or bacterial DNA we can say that okay genomic DNA of bacteria now the genomic DNA of bacteria consists uh, it can be circular DNA it may not be circular it depends on the situation uh, in most of the cases is a circular DNA as we are taking the example as E. coli if we take the example E. coli DNA replication they have a circular genome right the circular DNA in, in their body I'm not talking about plasmids because plasmid replication is completely separate there but in this case if it's a circular genome of the E. coli that circular genome if I if I draw it in a very basic manner or, or linear fashion we avoid confusion let's say this is the genome in this genome there are two different uh, sequence that are very very important to help the bacteria to initiate the DNA replication process the first sequence is, is nine base pair long and there is a stretch of four such sequences four such sequences nine base pair long okay okay these are known as the initiatory sequences and recognition sequences for initiation okay the initiation recognition sequences now these sequences involve a very important thing that whenever these sequences are present that is known as the origin of replication so this region of the DNA is known as the origin of replication. There are different names, REC, REP, and many more names are there, but they are known as origin of replication. And this origin of replication is uh, acting as a signal uh, so that they can start the replication. Now further downstream of it, uh, further upstream of it, sorry, if I look at the upstream process, upstream of this of this genome, upstream of it, there are three more consecutive sequences of 13 base pair long 13 base pair long three consecutive sequences are present okay so this is the typical sequence structure found in the bacterial uh, genome you see here orec or origin of replication right upstream of it slight upstream of it we are having 30 base pair long three sequences see stretch of sequences now these stretch of sequences that we find they contain AT rich sequence okay AT rich element and that is the site where the replication will actually originate these are the recognition sequence and this is the origin uh, I mean origin of uh, replication sequences those two sequences are present very close to each other slightly upstream and downstream of it okay so once these things are present like this okay so I can uh, it's, it's better way to say this is as an origin of replication this has a or replication recognition sequence right so we can call it replication recognition sequence and we call it as a origin of replication it's better to tell them like this way okay so if this is organization of the genome this is the cis element that is present in the 
chromosome or the genome of bacteria okay this is the element it is found there now there are some proteins which are produced in the g1 phase uh, in e coli in this uh, in, in e coli there is no cell cycle stages like that but before the cell division process is there before even the cell division started they uh, when the cytosol is more than the genome genomic content they will produce some proteins and there are certain proteins you know when i am i am talking about dna replication might be sometimes i'll be talking about some other examples and names because uh, this set of videos is kind of the basic video to tell you what DNA replication is and how it goes on. So I'm going to talk, talk about the names of some enzymes that are common for eukaryotes and then also I'm give you the same enzymes, different name in case of E. coli. So do not confuse about the stuff. Uh, the whole process will be, I'll be basing, uh, based on the E. coli cell but I'll be telling you the example or names of some uh, same enzymes that used to work in the e. coli, uh, eukaryotic replication also. So here this is the situation and at this situation now the proteins will come and bind. Now the important stuff about how they initiate it. The process of replication is very simple in E. coli. It's formation of replication bubble, replication fork, right? And in, in eukaryotes we studied about the replication fork formation. What is a replication fork? Replication fork means the DNA, double stranded DNA will be melted, right? As double stranded DNA is melted, let's assume the same situation. If a double stranded DNA, let's say this is a double stranded DNA, if this DNA is melted like this, what kind of situation it will form? It's bad drawing, I need uh, one minute. Let's say this is a double stranded DNA and this DNA is melted. like that. So what it will form? It looks like a bubble, right? So if we melt this specific region, it will form something like this. We call it a replication bubble. And if you look at replication bubble, now if we specifically look at in this two different region, what do you look like? These regions look like something like this, right? Isn't it? So this is a structure like a fork, isn't it? So that's called as a replication fork. So each of this region is known as replication fork. So replication fork is to formed, right, when the DNA is melted. And the formation of replication bubble, if you look, two replication forks are formed at two different sites, okay. Now try to imagine the thing, the idea, that if it's a linear DNA, if it's a linear DNA, there is no necessity to form such kind of two replication fork or stuff. If it's a linear DNA, we can start from one point and we can go up to the end. Whenever we go up to the end, the complete DNA will be segregated. I mean, they will be produced, they will be separated, right? But in case of UK, in case of prokaryotes, in case of bacteria like E. coli, what we have is those two hands of DNA, those are attached. because the DNA is circular, right? So now imagine, let's say this is the origin of replication site and we start to form this bubble. Once the bubble is formed, then we put some proteins. You know, proteins are required to separate DNA strands from each other because they are, they are bonded with hydrogen bonds, right? They are attached with hydrogen bonds to each other. We need to melt those hydrogen bonds, open up those strands, separate those strands, formation of replication bubble, two replication forks and two different ends. Then this whole replication forks will move in these two opposite directions because the replication process will start from this end and it will go like this clockwise direction and another way replication will start at this fork it will go at this anti-clockwise direction so anti-clockwise and clockwise direction they will come and as the fork will move the bubble will also move I mean the the new new DNA is continuously to synthesize like this as it mo it's moving and ultimately what will happen those two forks are going to collide somewhere here so they are going to meet somewhere wherever they are going to meet that will be the end of DNA replication so this is the idea they will start two ends they will come and meet that will be the end of DNA replication okay so this is the idea of how the DNA replication works in E. coli cell. 
okay now there will be specific sites also to make sure that they properly end there and also just imagine if it's a circular dna two dna strands are produced so after the end after this this uh, replication bubble meet, meets a, at a specific point what will happen after this whole thing the circular dna and the newly strands will be interwound like this one inside another it looks something like that okay two circles one inside another uh, it's it's a better way to to say two circles are there one inside another like this like like joined like that so what we need to do we need to cleave one of this dna so that it's joined and we get two circular dna that is the idea after this whole process is done we need to cleave one of this then we need to separate them and join them again okay so we require different enzymes and proteins for that so we'll be talking about this whole stages later so now imagine at this at this start point because we are at the initiation phase now and i'm going to talk about the all those details also so at the very beginning we need to create this bubble or replication bubble or replication fork so to create the replication bubble the strategy uses two different proteins first protein is dna a this this nine uh, nucleotide sequences are also known as dna a box because dna is the primary protein that is required for the process of dna replication in e coli so at the very beginning we have a dna a okay i say dna a in capital whatever so we have a dna a protein dna a protein interacts with this dna a box region so dna a protein will interact there multiple number of dna a proteins will be there and what they will do is actually multiple dna a proteins will come and, and stay there so it will it will kind of create a stress in this dna in this this dna a box segment of the dna what kind of stress it will allow this dna to be have a negative supercoil okay so it, it to provide some stress to the dna in this specific stretch of elements so due to the creation of this let's draw this uh, carefully first yeah so let's say these are lot of dna a proteins this red colored dna a proteins lot of dna a proteins are involved and what it does actually it, it start to form that negative supercoil in this specific dna a box region these are the dna a box region okay start to form this negative supercoil negative supercoil so what it does it it will apply immense tension and pressure to this dna why because this dna terminal ends are linked remember if it's a linear dna they will not create any tension because it can be released from outside but as it is a uh, circular dna you're tie tying a knot in the circle so what it does actually it creates a pressure a tension and to release the tension the way to release this negative this tension applied is to melt the dna upstream if we melt the dna upstream then this tension can be released right so that is how we start melting the dna melting the dna means separating the dna strands from each other so how we melt the dna as it uh, applies the pressure we will we have this 13 nucleotide long at rich sequence remember right here we have at rich sequence 13 nucleotide long at rich sequence means adenine with thymine only pairs with two hydrogen bonds so we don't require huge amount of energy to separate them right so we require some amount of energy and we get the energy from atp hydrolysis right but we need an enzyme who will allow this atp to be hydrolyzing the energy and separating the strands and we have an enzyme in case of e coli the name is dna b so we have the enzyme dna b dna b is the enzyme which is recruited here and what dna b does it it uses the atp hydrolysis energy and start separating the dna strands from each other okay so remember this nine base pair sequences 
is the sequence where DNA binds and initiate the formation of replication bubble upstream of it. Okay, and it's easy to separate AT reach sequence. That's why it, it, it has more AT reach sequences here. So it will start separating them. But DNA B cannot load itself into the DNA, into, into this specific point. So they require help from another protein known as DNA C. So what we have? We have a DNA B and DNA C to produce a complex. Six DNA B, six DNA C, they form a complex, right? And complex looks like something like that. Let's say six, six DNA B as a complex and DNA C are also attached. So this DNA B, DNA C complex will be loaded to one of such strands because of this tension some hydrogen bonds are broken and we load this in one of the strands now imagine the situation if you load this whole complex to one of the strands let's say the circular complex right it's loaded in one of the strands and now this complex will start moving in this direction so what will happen in between there are hydrogen bonds remember and the hydrogen bonds are broken here so as this complex move towards this direction those hydrogen bonds will keep on destroying so the dna strands will come up so what we will see we see the melting of the dna we see the formation of replication bubble here okay this is how the replication bubble is formed they will be separated from each other. Once they are separated, replication bubble is formed. And once replication bubble is formed, remember, now as this heli, as this, as this DNA B is working there and separating the strands, it's opening and it, it requires energy. So you see, this is a huge energy consuming phase. Cell do not want to do this stage until and unless they are fully committed for the replication and for the division of the cell. Okay, so as it is moving now single strands are being generated, right? So the single strands can also repair, re-anneal between, between themselves. So to prevent that, we need another set of proteins, then known as single strand binding proteins. The single strand binding proteins will bind to the single stranded DNA to, to prevent them from re-annealing with each other. So this is the start point, this is the start point of the DNA replication in E. coli. Now I must tell you, the starting is different in case of eukaryotes, but there are the similarity between the enzymes who are involved in to do the task. For example, in, 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 in eukaryotic cells, the first this complex like DNA B, it's a hexameric complex which requires energy of ATP hydrolysis to open DNA strands, we have the same enzyme in eukaryotes known as DNA helicase. So DNA B is very similar with DNA helicase function, right? So SSB is the same protein that we find in eukaryotes. They are the same single strand binding proteins. Now once that stuff is done, once uh, it is created, replication bubbles start to form, SSB start to attach to the single stranded DNA. Then the final stage of the initiation, that is the initiation of priming. Because the DNA polymerase cannot initiate polymerization of the nucleotides on its own. It requires a free 3' prime hydroxyl group to start this whole process, right? So in this case, once the SSVs are filled, so let me draw it again in a different angle. So what we have now, we have a situation like this. This is a single stranded DNA, and we have helicase here. Loaded in one of the strands. It's it's uh, if it loads in one of the strands, it's okay because it does not need to row in two two of the strands because it can separate them easily. And these are the hydrogen bonding between the DNA. Okay. And SSBs are attached. 
different copies of SSBs are bound, single strand binding proteins here. They are attached. Now the idea is these are SSBs. This is DNA B. Now the final stage is the priming. So we need to have a nucleotide priming. And this is a ribonucleotide priming because DNA polymerase cannot initiate the replication. So we require any RNA polymerase to start this priming. Because RNA polymerase is de novo polymerase, that means they can start the priming process or polymerization process from scratch. So here, the another protein will come. The protein is known as DNA G. DNA G. Now this DNA G protein will come, and this DNA G protein is nothing but primase enzyme that we know of working in case of eukaryotes. So again another similarity. So this DNA G will come and it will be interact, it will be placed it'll be, and also some nucleotides, ribonucleotides are also required. So ribonucleotides are required because they will start adding some of the ribonucleotide sequences here and SSB will move. So few nucleotide sequences are added. At the end, we have a 3 prime hydroxyl group free now due to the addition of DNA G. So I can write here, this is the DNA G. Start adding some nucleotide sequences and it will create a few stretch of nucleotide sequences, 5 to 10 nucleotide stretches, ribonucleotide sequence obviously, which gives a 3 prime hydroxyl group. But this stretch of the sequence is RNA sequence, right? It's not deoxyribose sequence, it's RNA sequence. And once this thing is done, some SSBs are released because uh, for this they require the, uh, the other complementary strand. So SSB molecules will be released, right? Some SSB molecules will be released there. And then it will start adding the main polymerizing enzyme for this reaction and that is DNA polymerase 3. So once this stage is achieved, that is the end of initiation of the replication, then they will load DNA polymerase 3. And then DNA polymerase 3 can initiate the process of elongation by taking the 3 prime hydroxyl. But remember, in this case, the priming is required in both of the strands because the replication will continue in both the strands simultaneously. And that's true for prokaryotes as well as for eukaryotes. But there is a specific functionality of polymerase, DNA polymerase to function. And that is DNA polymerase always function from 5 prime to 3 prime. That means polymerase will start on adding nucleotide sequences. The new strand that will build will be from 5 prime to 3 prime. So if this is the new strand, polymerase needs to go at this direction. So the new strands, this one will be 5 prime. This is will be this one will be three prime. Okay. So obviously the complementary strand will be three prime to five prime. So the other complementary strand will be five prime to three prime. Right. Now remember one thing here. Polymerase can move from this new five prime to three prime direction. So in this direction, okay, easily without any hesitation, any problem. But on the other hand, on the other strand. The 5 prime to 3 prime directionality will be this because the new strands 5 prime will be this, new strands 3 prime will be this. So according to this picture, polymerase cannot move 3 prime to 5 prime, that's true. But according to this picture, polymerase is required and polymerase if moved in this forward direction, it can only polymerize this strand only but not the other strand because the other strand is in opposite direction. But I told you DNA replication takes place simultaneously in both of the strands together. So how DNA polymers manage to do the synthesis of nucleotides in both the strands into different opposite directions? That is a big question and that is a question when most of the students puzzle and don't understand about the DNA replication and that is a process which we want to learn in the elongation phase 
because that is a part of elongation phase, right? So that is the end of the initiation phase of DNA replication, though it's a little bit congested here, but still I think it's enough to understand, make you understand how this process is going on. So I hope you like this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Thank you.